I'm Zainab and you're watching Study Mission. Today, the topic of our video is Fetch the Code Execute Cycle. To carry out a set of instructions, the CPU first of all fetches some data and instructions from memory and stores them in suitable registers. Both the address bus and data bus are used in this process. Once this is done, each instruction needs to be decoded before finally being executed. This all is known as the fetch, decode, execute cycle. In the fetch, decode, execute cycle, the next instruction is fetched from the memory address currently stored in the MAR and the instructions is stored in the MDR. The contents of the MDR is then copied to the current instruction register. The PC is then incremented, increased by one so that the next instruction can be taken to be processed. This figure shows how the fetch decode execute cycle is carried out in the Juan Newman computer architecture. Computer memory is made up of a number of partitions. Each partition consists of an address and its contents. This table uses 8 bits for each address and 8 bits for the content. In a real computer memory, the address and its contents are actually much larger than this. The address will uniquely identify every location in the memory and the contents will be the binary value stored in each location. Let us now consider two examples of how the MAR and MDR registers can be used when carrying out a read and write operation to and from memory. First, consider the read operation. We will use the memory section shown in this table. Suppose we want to read the contents of memory location 1111001. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. The two registers are used as follows. The address of location 1111001 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, to be read from is first written into the MAR, memory address register. A read signal is sent to the computer memory. The contents of memory location 11110001 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, are then put into the MDR, memory data register. Now let us now consider the write operation. Again, we will use the memory section shown in this table. Suppose this time we want to show how the value 1001001 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 was written into memory location 11111101. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. The data to be stored is first written into the MDR, memory data register. This data has to be written into location with address 11111101. So this address is now written into the MAR. Finally, a write signal is sent to the computer memory and the value 10010101 will then be written into the correct memory location. Cores, cache and internal clock. We will now consider the factors that determine the performance of a CPU. The first thing is to consider the role of the system clock. The clock defines the clock cycle that synchronizes all computer operations. As mentioned earlier, the control bus transmits timing signals ensuring everything is fully synchronized. By increasing clock speed, the processing speed of the computer is also increased. A typical current value is 3.5 GHz, which means 3.5 billion clock cycles a second. Although the speed of the computer may have been increased, it isn't possible to say that a computer's overall performance is necessarily increased by using a higher clock speed. Other factors need to be considered, for example, the width of the address bus and data bus, as mentioned earlier, can also affect computer performance and needs to be taken into account. Overclocking is a factor to be considered. The clock speed can be changed by accessing the BIOS, Basic Input Output System, and altering the settings. However, using a clock speed higher than the computer was designed for can lead to problems, for example, Execution of instructions outside design limits can lead to seriously 
unsynchronized operations. That is, an instruction is unable to complete in time, therefore the next one is due to be executed. The computer would simply crash and become unstable. Overclocking can lead to serious overheating of the CPU, again leading to unreliable performances. The used cache memory is located within the CPU itself, which means it has much faster data, excess times than RAM. Cache memory stores frequently used instruction and data that need to be accessed faster, which improves CPU performance. When a CPU wishes to read memory, it will first check out the cache and then move on to main memory or RAM if the required data is in there. The larger the cache memory size, the better the CPU. The use of a different number of cores can improve computer performance. A core is made up of an ALU, a control unit, and the registers. Many computers are dual core. The CPU is made up of two cores or quadruple cores. The CPU is made up of four cores. The idea of using more cores alleviates the need to continually increase clock speeds. However, doubling the number of cores doesn't necessarily double the computer's performance since we have to take into account the need for the CPU reduced overall performance. For example, with a dual core, the CPU communicates with both cores using one channel, reducing potential increase in its performance. While with a quad core, the CPU communicates with all four cores using the channels, considerably reducing potential performance. So all these factors need to be taken into account when considering computer performance. Summarizing these points, increasing bus width, data and address buses increases the performance and speed of a computer system. Increasing clock speed will potentially increase the speed of a computer. A computer's performance can be changed by altering bus width, clock speed, and use of multi-core CPUs. Use of cache memories can also speed up a CPU's performance. Thank you for watching Studymation, animated educational videos.